Intel's new laptop CPUs are coming, complete with up to 24 cores, 5.6 GHz boost clocks, and the title of the fastest mobile processor. This should be pretty good, so let's take a, a quick peek. These new chips are pretty mental. The top end one, the 13950HX, is sporting 8 P cores and 16 E cores, a max boost of 5.6 GHz and a 55 watt CDP, and a pretty mad list of new features too. Everything from enhanced Intel Thread Director, so the E cores might actually not break your games and be genuinely useful, to PCIe Gen 5 support. The chips still support both DDR5 and DDR4, giving laptop manufacturers a, a bit of flexibility when designing a new model, and it does support XMP3. 3.0 as well. You can have up to four RAM modules for a total of 128 gig of RAM, which combined with the 24 total cores should make these absolute productivity powerhouses. You also get support for up to two discrete Thunderbolt 4 controllers for connecting to well, literally everything. In fact, the I.O. layout is pretty interesting. You have 16 PCIe lanes, Gen 5 lanes, direct to the CPU for your graphics, alongside another four Gen 4 lanes direct to the CPU for your main SSD. You then have what is basically a PCI Gen 4 by 8 link to the chipsets, which then has a further 16 PCI lanes available, as well as Wi-Fi 6E, 8 SATA ports, 10 USB 3 ports, and a bit more, which, um, that's not bad, eh? Now, I mentioned that these are likely to be productivity powerhouses, and Intel seems to think so too, as they provided some first-party benchmarks for us to gawk at. In the BMW scene in Blender, they're quoting 79% more performance than the 12900HK. Well, that's not right. I mean, the 12980, uh, 12900HX is the one to be comparing to here, which, as you can see, is already something like 20 to 30% faster than the 12900HK. But if I'm being honest, it sure does look like the majority of the performance improvement here is thanks to the doubled E cores. Maybe a, a hair faster clock speeds too, but still an improvement nonetheless. Premiere, Photoshop, and After Effects all show a, a small improvement in the Puget Bench suites, and if CAD or computer-aided design is your thing, then there is a decent improvement in the Autodesk suite too. But of course, the slide that we're all looking for here is this one the gaming results. Up to 12% faster is a pretty massive improvement, although unfortunately Intel haven't listed any of the settings or resolutions that they've tested at here, so it's hard to know how much of a real world difference you could actually expect. At least they are testing apples to apples here with the 13950HX and the 12900HX, although I noticed um, there was, there was one little discrepancy. Both of the Intel machines are using the same MSI GT77 Titan chassis with an RTX 3080 Ti laptop with 175 watt TDP. The AMD system is a completely different model, the Alienware M17 with 155 watt 3080 Ti. So they're testing a slower machine for the AMD results. Now Intel would probably say that they just couldn't find a 175 watt 3080 Ti laptop with a 6900HX, which as far as I can tell, you can find one. The XMG's Neo 17 comes with that spec, but it's hilarious that they think the you know they, they get to claim the based on in-game benchmark per mode performance with the same GPU. Sure, it's the same GPU, but one's detuned. Realistically, you should almost always ignore first-party benchmarks from anyone, be it Intel, AMD, Nvidia, or anyone else. They are marketing materials designed to make their stuff look good and everyone else's stuff look bad. For gaming, I would expect relatively little performance improvement, generally speaking. 
Most titles are still GPU bound on laptops, with only titles like Microsoft Flight Simulator and CSGO still being major CPU hawks. For more, the, the more modest chips and more modest GPUs, I suspect the difference isn't going to be that massive. Also, while well, I have you, something else Intel is announcing today is their non-Case Q desktop chips. This is very much the same as their desktop chips that we've already seen, more e-cores, slightly improved, improved clock speeds, a larger cache, but will be slower than the Case Q variants as always. They haven't given me a full list of new chips as of yet, but you can expect them to fill out the rest of the lineup, like the 13400 that I would expect will be a pretty great choice once again. I'll be talking a bit more about those in my next video, featuring this bad boy, a B670 motherboard, which is likely the one you'll actually want to get instead of the very expensive Z690 boards, um, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. In short then, the 13th gen mobile chips should give a little improvement in gaming with a larger leap in productivity, especially on those top end chips. The hybrid architecture is improving, so you should have less issues, although it's very much a talk step rather than a tick uh, like the 12th gen was. Still, I'll be interested to see some more real world tests, obviously get some in and test them. And so if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments, hit the subscribe button, all that sort of stuff. If you want to stay up to date on these videos, like I said, you can subscribe. There's also a whole load of other videos on the channel. There's like 2000 at this point. So feel free to go and troll through maybe some of the laptop reviews or uh, you know CPU desktop reviews, that sort of stuff. Feel free to take a look. If you want to support the channel, you can do so, uh, do so through YouTube, uh, Patreon, or pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or there's some affiliate links in the description that you can check out as well. And otherwise, that's kind of it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.